Oh, God! There we go. Ah. Don't worry, it's OK. Let go of me. Let go. We're back on shift inside the ambulance. Whoa, got a job. If you need me to get in the back, you might have to stop. With more medical emergencies. I'm OK. Oh, that's a good one. And more cameras. What's that up there? That, Tyler, is a little camera. We're taking you back to the heart of the action. Just lie down for me. We're from the ambulance, OK? No, I'm sorry. Ah! There are some new faces. I'm happy to be your crewmate. I feel like we've bonded. <laughs> and some old friends. I'm better driving than you. Is it the fact that I'm faster and smoother than you? Your driving's terrible. How can I help? <laughs> Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Nice deep breaths. Come on, open up. Smash in. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. We'll get you right. Right. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews from West Midlands Ambulance Service. I don't need to be a doctor. I just need to know what I can do to help. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. We see so many people. You get told that nasty C word. There's so many people can fight it now. Step inside the ambulance. You take care, you, mate. You. All right, mate. Thank you. Like this strap on a uh, bit tight. Leash, sir. Not supposed to be in a corset, you know. <laughs> ah, oh. It's good for your posture. It is good for my posture. I have shocking posture. This isn't the most comfortable for us, is it? No, it isn't at all, especially not with the twangy. Oh, no, it's just, oh, just adjust it. Ping! <laughs> I just feel like a bra. <laughs> Admittedly, my experience wearing a bra is limited to, to like, antics at uni, like a water mankini at uni, <laughs> a few times for nights out. <laughs> Although, admittedly, my man boobs are significantly bigger now than what they were when I was at uni. Oh, It's 10.30 Friday morning, and Craig Olsop and Darren Westwood are on a day shift. See a funny job around the corner here. You know, it's a technician. We went around to this bloke. And what he'd done is reversed his car up onto one of these little stumpy bollards. Yeah. So his back rear wheel was on the bollard. Yeah. So he had the intuition to get a couple of air springs and his jack. And he was jacking his car up to try and get his car off this bollard. Yeah. Right? He was just checking to see whether it was clear with his hand, and the car dropped down on his... On his oh, hand no. and trapped him between these bollards over here, them small bollards. Oh, jeez. So when we got to him, his thumb was underneath his car and on top of the post. Jeez. Nine 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 mode activated. A new job has just come in. A nine 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 call from a man whose fiance is having a seizure. Okay, we're going out to a female. Category one patient, the query in peri arrest or had a fit. Seven minutes later, Darren and Craig arrive on scene. Their body worn cameras will capture everything. What's this lady's name? Zoe. The patient's worried fiancé, Danny, is waiting for the ambulance crew. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh hello, mate. The door's open. I've got dogs. Do you want me to try and lock them up? Are they OK? They're fine. Yes, yeah, Are they big? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hello. Oh, come on. Hello. Hello. Danny takes them upstairs. Maybe is she She's in the, in the front room, yeah. Yeah. She's she been in here and had a fit at all. Yeah. Come on. Right. Yeah. Zoe? Hello, Zoe. Zoe. Right. You're right. You're right. In the ambulance service. Okay. Twenty-nine-year-old Zoe was in the shower when she had a seizure and passed out. Yeah. Is she known epileptic? No. Danny found Zoe on the bathroom floor. He helped her up and moved her to the bedroom. She suffers with health anxiety, and 
She, so she overly stresses about her a conditions. Yeah. All, All right, right sweet. Okay. Stay there, stay there. Stay relaxed. And just to reiterate, so this has happened how many times to Zoe? Once. Just this is the second time. Her first seizure happened three months ago, and Zoe says they started after she had her first child. Is this one similar to the first one? Hell of a lot shorter. It's about 30 seconds. You know, like the scream they do, like the, the cry beforehand, like it sounds like they're having a nightmare. Yeah. That was enough time for me to get upstairs. When, when you went to the bathroom, yeah. was she speaking to you normally or was no, she...? No, she was screaming, so she was conscious all the way through at this time. Is it yeah. proper full-on shaking? Or... There was involuntary movements. Just do your temperature, all right, sweet. Craig needs to do some checks on Zoe, but she's very disorientated. So, just keep your head still, just do your temperature. Doctors have told Zoe she doesn't have epilepsy. And they're unsure of what's causing her seizures. All right. Do you know where you are? Where are you? Tell me. At home? We're from the ambulance service suite. So at the moment, you might be a little bit confused and a little bit dazed about what's actually going on because you're in the post ictal stage. So that's after a seizure. All right. We'll give you a couple of few minutes now and you'll probably come back round even more, so with just a bit of time. We could probably try a bit of an auction on you. That might help you as well. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll put this on you, OK? Just breathe normally. It might make your mouth a little bit dry. Should I see a CT scan? Yeah. Normal. Have you got an MRI? Yeah. And everything yeah. looks fine? You wouldn't be as bad if she hadn't got health anxiety. Yeah, I mean, you, you can get uh, something called pseudo fits related to anxiety issues. Yeah. But it's not the pseudo fit that we probably know where somebody's pulling it on. Yeah. Okay, there is actually a, a mental health issue linked to having like a pseudo fit. Pseudo seizures are uh, also known as uh, psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. Uh, difficult to diagnose, mainly because they're linked to mental health, uh, particularly when the patient is stressed or in an emotional state. They present as though they're having an epileptic fit. In this lady's case, it was difficult to diagnose whether she was having an epilepsy or not because she's still under investigation for all these problems. And that's why we elected to take her in rather than leave her at home. Have you got a bit of a headache at all? A little bit. A little bit. You're feeling a bit dizzy. Okay. She wasn't complaining of sickness last time. OK. But by the time the ambulance got here and got her down into the ambulance, she still couldn't remember her name. Oh, and just hold the mask over your nose. Don't put it on just in case you are sick. All right. Might help you to come round a little bit quicker. Everything's looking fine, sweet. It's mounting time, all right. I think we do need to pop her up the hospital still because we haven't got a firm diagnosis of what's going on. It's difficult at the moment in time because you're just wondering why these things are happening to you. There may be any number of reasons and they need to investigate them fully. OK. A few last bumps. Zoe's awareness of what's happened today is coming back to her. Push your knees. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to bring the skin. OK. Yeah. There we go. But Zoe still has little memory of the seizure itself. Just give me a shout then when you're ready, mate. Yeah, we'll do. You, you are presenting as though you're having a episodes of convulsional epilepsy. There's different types you can get, though, sweet. There's one which is linked to mental health issues. If you get anxiety or anything else like that, you can have a pseudo fit. But I don't feel anxious. She got referred from the doctor months and months and months ago about health anxiety. This before the... Way before, or, yeah, or way before. Stuff. But she convinced herself that she could manage it kind of herself and that she'd got... and she had got a lot better. Obviously, it was, it was a difficult situation for both Zoe and her partner. She'd had a few episodes very similar to this without real diagnosis. Obviously, she was getting frustrated. I did feel for her. There's nothing to worry about mental health issues, by the way. You know, you're not any more different than anybody else. I'll suffer with depression. 
I've been medicated for it and I've been off for work for it, you know, it's nothing unusual. So don't feel, you know, you're on your own. I've had it when I was at school. Does. Pseudo almost sounds like you're putting them on, but it's not, not the case. They are linked to a mental health issue. It's mental, not physical. And you, your mind is, a, is a, a very strong thing, OK? It's just all about, sometimes, in your head, how you can manifest these things. I feel really sick going backwards. I did last time, but I'm not very okay. good at Not very good at going backwards. Not very good at going backwards. Nineteen minutes later, they arrive at the hospital. Yep. Up for a bump down here, mate. A and E doctors will need to monitor Zoe further to try and work out what's causing her seizures. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. It's 8 a.m. and Gaz Clark and Liam Dale have just clocked on. You know, ease yourself into a day, eh? <laughs> and they've just been called to their first emergency. 999 room. It's a maternity case, wanting to push. A heavily pregnant young woman has been vomiting all morning. Case number is 580. I hope she stops pushing. How many babies have you delivered? It's about 20, 21 babies now. It's quite a lot. Yeah, I was lucky the first ever one got him into room number one or whatever on the left hand side. And as we moved her over onto the bed, she started to deliver, and it was like catching on the way out. <laughs> it really was. Closely followed by my crewmate, bursting out the door, looking at the midwives, and went, baby, been born. And four midwives, like, come steaming into the room. Yeah. I say with babies, like, for the most part, they deliver themselves, don't they? Yeah. Like, unless there's something going wrong. So this one's a straightforward one, eh? They arrive on scene in just three minutes. That block over there. I'd rather we were ready to go for this one, just in case. As the baby is due in just five weeks, the crew need to be prepared for a premature birth. Oh, yeah. Right. 20-year-old Bethany is home alone. What's been going on? All right. Getting a breathless. Right. Don't feel myself at all. Yeah. 34 weeks pregnant today. How many? 34 weeks. 34. Right. Any vomiting? I've been vomiting. I've been sick twice. Right. I've got diarrhea. Right, that's the next question. Yeah. Any diarrhea along with it? Right. Bethany is clearly very worried. And her symptoms suggest she could be going into labour. Maternity? Yeah. Right. not moving. Right. I've got pains in my belly. My water's right. a bum, my water was next to my last food. This time I've got wet more contractions as well. Learning Bethany's waters broke five days ago is much more alarming, as the waters protect an unborn baby from infection in the womb. So have you felt any kind of contractions that you think of or not? I keep having pains every half an hour. Where? Right here. Right. Across my belly and down the bottom. Right. Are they just on the one side or on both sides? Just all over. Right. Just all over? Yeah. yeah. No worries. Just panicking you a bit now, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I can understand it. When we were called to Bethany, she was obviously in distress. Her waters had broken. It can be a, a great concern if infection did actually get in and it could threaten the life of the baby. Yeah, but I'm obviously worried because it's my first. Oh, God, yeah, no, 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 no. There's just total... Focus on your arm. Yourself. No, there's nothing stupid about it. I know, generally, when I feel... I don't feel myself at all. Right. There's nothing stupid about it, yeah. It is a perfect natural thing, giving birth. We've never done it before. Never it's always either. scary. It's going to be. Never. Yeah. Been off your food? Yeah, I need it. Is that lately or is that for quite a while? It's been like this for three or four days. Three, three or four days. days, right. What I'm going to have a do is, if you don't mind, go have a little listen to your tummy. Yes. Okay. Now that you've sat down for a bit. Good. 
not listening for baby. Yeah, what I'm listening for is to make sure that your bowels are still working properly, because if there's any major trauma, if you move around, your bowels normally go quiet and everything. Liam checks her heart rate, and it's faster than it should be. 7.2. And her blood sugars are also high. Do you have a lot of energy drinks and things? Hot and drink water. I was wondering if that was contributing to your heart being a little bit quick as well, as well as your sugars being up. But... Yeah. Why is your heart beating too quick? Well, you see, heart-wise, up to 99 beats a minute is called normal. After 99, it's called fast. Yours is 102. Yeah, just... yeah. Do you smoke? Yeah, I No, right. I've only had one today. But smoke, you shouldn't. If you cut down to one or two a day, then there's no reason why you can't give up. Yesterday, one five all day. When we found out that Bethany had been continuing smoking throughout the pregnancy, this was a bit of a worry for us, especially hearing that the baby hadn't been moving. She was right to be concerned with what was going on, and we needed to get up to the hospital for a full checkup. Squeeze yourself in that one. So we just need to do your blood pressure again. Every time you move somebody, we always redo the observations. So we'll do your blood pressure and put a little probe on the end of your finger. That's fine. Okay, whenever you're ready, we'll have a little trundle. It's just over two miles to the nearest hospital, and Bethany will be going straight to the maternity ward. To help her relax, father of five, Gaz, does his best to reassure Bethany that she's in safe hands. A lot of people don't know that we're trained in midwifery. We're trained in delivering babies. Yeah. Who else is going to do it? Us. You're going to have to do it now. Yeah. So we've trained all the way from there, from birth. It's all right. I've done nursing, but I've done it with the elderly. I couldn't do that job. I've done the elderly. Six minutes later, they arrive at hospital. We're going to need your green notes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just thinking, on the way in, we've got to see reception and that, and they might want your green notes, so we can pick up the rest of your notes to take up. That is about the only thing I've not had since I've been a para. You've said it now, Matt. I'm a curse. No. When you say these things, no. it happens. No. You can't say it. With no. me, you really can't say it. I don't know what it was about Saturday night. It was so busy, but yeah. we had loads of maternity jobs. But we went to this one, and um, it come through as contractions three minutes apart, urge to push. And when we got there, she was quite calm, third baby, and she said she was going to a birthing centre. So we took her to the birthing centre. And as we were putting the stretcher back on, they said, um, oh, can you hang fire? And we were like, yeah, no problem. Went back in with the stretcher and we literally got through. We were going in the door and we were like, we heard the baby crying. Baby didn't want to wait to be born. And I thought, oh, that was close, us delivering that baby on the back of the ambulance. I've delivered over 40 babies. Have you? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Quite a few of them named after me as well. Really? Yeah. Oh. Sebastian the fourth. <laughs> Twice removed. <laughs> It's 9.30 in the morning, and Joe Wilson is catching up with Sam Grosvenor, who's just back from a mountaineering holiday. Altitude sickness can affect anybody at any time. We didn't have time to acclimatise properly. Did you not take any Viagra? I know it works for travel sickness. No, I didn't take any Viagra. Yeah. Maybe next time I would. A new job has just come in. Diabetic problems, hypo, low, not coherence. Nine, nine, nine. It's from a woman whose 72-year-old diabetic husband has collapsed on the sofa. 
His sugar levels are so low that he's nearly lost consciousness and is unresponsive. Ten minutes later, they arrive and are met by the patient's wife, Heather. She's tried everything to revive him, but nothing has worked. What's his name? David. Hello, David. David was about to eat breakfast when his blood sugar levels dropped so low, he started to lose consciousness. This is a diabetic emergency. Did you manage to check his blood sugar levels, darling? No, I don't know where his machine was. Oh, are. dear. He's got three and none of them work. Oh, that's he no good, is it? A hyperglycemic episode is where the blood sugar falls below normal levels. The patient becomes pale, quite sweaty, and then there's the onset of fatigue, confusion. Eventually, the patient passes out and could potentially slip into a coma. How does he manage his diabetes, sweetheart? Does he...? Well, he has a, an injection in the morning. Yeah. He has... Um... Loads of tablets. He's got a thing in his pocket which tells you his passport that's got it all written on. Um, I can show you all his tablets in the cupboard if that's... If you can't... Have you got, like, a prescription or anything that you... Yeah, yeah if you bring one of those in. David was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in 1998. Right, and you say you've given him two glucose tablets and one of those glucogens. How long ago did you give that sweetheart? About 15 minutes. They need to get David's blood sugar back to normal. Otherwise, he could lose consciousness altogether and even go into a coma. It's obviously not working. I want to pop a needle in you, if that's OK. I'm just going to have this arm. Let's have a look at the back of this arm. That's a good one. I'm going to pop a little needle in you, and we're going to give you some sugared water just to bring your blood sugar levels back up, OK? Yeah. Dave might have had a hypoglycemic episode because he wasn't keeping on top of his medications. And he just let it lapse. He hasn't used his kit to check his blood sugars. I don't think he fully uh, understood the implications and the ramifications of not changing his lifestyle. Joe gives David sugared water through an intravenous drip. we will a sharp scratch, Dave. To your blood pressure, David. If the intravenous medication doesn't work, David's condition could become life-threatening. I said, just relax, David. It's just doing your blood pressure. You able to sit up a bit more for us? We're going to try and sit up. Whoa, 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 don't move your arm. Don't move your arm. Got a cannula in you. The medication normally takes about 10 minutes to have an effect, and it's not long before David begins to come round. <laughs> You've had a hypo, David. Your blood sugars have got really low. That's another one. Yeah, unfortunately. Your blood sugar's got really low, and um, your wife gave you some glucose bars and glucose tablets, but you still weren't coming round. So what we've done is we've chucked a needle in you and we've given you some, um, some pure glucose, which seems to be working for you. The ambulance crew will monitor David until he is fully alert. As they wait, Joe's intrigued by Heather's front room. Oh, do you, you, you obviously like dolls? Yeah, I've, off dolls now, we're into dolls' houses and miniatures. That's the, the piece de resistance, that is. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. See, oh. see if we've got action. Oh, it doesn't all light up, does it? Look at that. Does it all open up as well, does it? It does, yeah. yeah. Since being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes nearly 20 years ago, David has had just two hypoglycemic episodes. So when did all this start? When did you notice know his hypo? He came downstairs and he says, I feel funny. Yeah. And I know that's the sign. He wouldn't let me put the glucose gel in to start with. I had to wait till it was more further gone and I could force his mouth open to get it in. How are you feeling, right. Dave? I'm Yeah. He's not, he's not talking properly. He's not talking properly. You're not talking properly? No. Why aren't you talking properly? I don't know. You don't know? He's still dopey. What day is it today, David? What day of the week is it? Wednesday. Wednesday. What month? I think it's about July. Uh, That's it. It's now 25 minutes since David was given the medication, and he's slowly beginning to get back to his normal self. He won't need to go to hospital. As long as you come round, 
Dave, we'll be able to leave you here. Oh, oh, good, good. Thank you. So where are your sugar machines, Dave? I couldn't find them. I can't. I, I can't find them. You could do with um, keeping them handy. Well, we're going to have to make a diabetic referral for him. So someone from the ambulance service is going to contact his doctors and update them on um, what's happened today. Oh, yeah. How are you feeling now? Feeling much better, much better now, thank you. David will need to visit his doctor's surgery to have his diabetic medication reassessed. All right, it's a pleasure to have met you, David. Okay. You track there. All the best, David. Together at our I said, well, you only got one glove on before. I said, I broke my thumb. So I started laughing. So, well, how do you know you broke your thumb? He said, because unless wear my glove, it falls off. <laughs> we took his glove off and his thumb went, Rrr. I was like, you're going to have to get that seen to. And he went, oh, I don't know. He said, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go and get, an, I'll get a bit of stick. He said, and I'll tie it up so that it don't move. He said, and it'll knit back together, won't it? And I thought, well, I can't deny his logic. Yeah, that's all they're going to do at hospital for you. And he went, exactly. I thought, why don't you do it now? He said, oh, I'll build a barbecue with a stick attached to my thumb. I'll do it in a minute. And he did. He finished building the barbecue. I was like, <laughs> OK, then. <laughs> it's just gone lunchtime, and Grant Porter and Hannah Potter are waiting for their next job to come through. Oh, we've got a job. Right, we have won. Well, look, he did today. Back pain, lower back pain, back pain. ill, dehydration. Ten minutes later, they arrive at the man's house and are greeted by the patient's brother, Graham, and a doctor from his local GP surgery. Thank you so much for coming so quickly. It's OK. Um, they did put it through as an emergency. Yeah. So. He's, not, he's not in a good way. He's a gentleman who just came out from Hospital City right. a few days ago. Okay. They did a CT and a biopsy and all this, and they, he's got a high-grade sarcoma. He's right. back pain for, like, eight months' weight loss. Yeah. And there's anemia and all this. So since he's come home, it's just his brother who's with him. Okay. He's literally not gone out of bed. He's not drunk or eaten anything. He's in severe pain. He's yeah. up to his morphine. The main thing is he's not eating, drinking anything, so I think just going by a and &E, yeah. get yeah. some fluids and things. Yeah, we'll yeah, have a look. Fine. We'll follow you, sir. You. We'll follow you, because we'll get lost. <laughs> it might seem simple, but we'll manage We're it. easily uh, confused. His brother takes them inside to see the patient. Can we get... Are you coming back to bed, are you? What, which way are you going? Well, what, what do you want to do to me? We've got to do all their stuff on you, really. We've got to do all their observations and that. 70-year-old Colin found out just two days ago that he has sarcoma, a rare form of cancer, in the bones of his pelvis. Come and get onto the bed to enjoy it. He's waiting for experts to recommend a course of treatment, but in the meantime, he's in severe pain. How long have you had the pain for in your leg? Eight, eight months. Eight, eight months? God. Colin has been prescribed two different types of morphine for the pain, but he's been a bit naughty. I didn't have none last night, Graham. None of your tablets? I had none of me morphine this morning, neither. Do you think if it's hurting, it'd be ideal to take some then? Yeah. yeah the so the problem is, the doctor's system. come and she said, oh, he's got his, all his morphine, it's killing him, the pain is. But if you haven't taken, he's not going to... No, I didn't take nothing. But in the bottle over there, and the tablets in the packet over there aren't going to do any work, are they? They're only going to work in your belly. How come you haven't taken them? Well, I'm going to start off, or get up and get out there Right, OK, so that's it. The, the reason is because you can't get them. You could do with them up here now, couldn't you? So you don't have to trek to get them. Are you struggling to get up and down the stairs, are you? Colin's medication is one thing, but Grant's bigger concern right now is that since being diagnosed with cancer, Colin has given up eating or drinking. Are you not eating because you can't eat, or are you not eating because you can't make the food? No, because I can't go to the toilet, can I? Because I'm... Now... If you've... It's the drugs they bind in yeah. me, and they, the morphine. How long is it that you haven't gone to the toilet for? You've been constipated well, I for? Went yesterday. Yeah, no, the, the main problem you've got there is if you haven't been really eating, there's, there's not really a lot to come out. What goes in must come out. So if you haven't been eating for a couple of days, 
and there's not going to be a couple of days worth of stuff to come out because it's going to be empty, isn't it? You can only bring out what you've put in. How much have you been drinking two a day? Days. Two days. That one's been there two days? Yeah. That's how much you've drunk in two days, out of that bottle. How come you haven't been drinking? Because I drink when I feel like it, and that's, that's all I've been drinking. Is it because that <laughs> makes you not thirsty? Is it the... No, it don't make me thirsty. It just dries, it dries your mouth. And you don't want to drink after that. Not eating, drinking, obviously, the body's got no fuel. So anything that you have, have got wrong with you, it's just going to make you feel worse. And also, if you're poorly, as in Colin's case with cancer, he needs a healthier body as he can to fight the cancer and try and get better. And if he's putting himself at a disadvantage with no fuel and energy, you're just going to get worse and worse. Whether it's the shock of the cancer diagnosis or his general ill health, Colin is clearly not looking after himself. He needs urgent attention for his dehydration, which leaves Grant with little choice as to what to do. Right then. So do you want to do what the doctor said and we'll, we can take you up to hospital? She'd rather you go and just have a, have a bit of fluids and they can just make sure you've eaten. I can't imagine you'll be there, you know, hopefully you'll only be there a couple of days if that. You might not even be there that long, but they'll just make sure you're eating and having your fluids and they can give you a once over. Grant and Hannah help to get Colin ready for the ambulance. Slowly. Oh. Are you going to come in up to hospital later? I'll phone up later. Than OK. I'm ready whenever you are. We're all strapped in the back so I can jump out at any time. Colin is also worried about what treatment he'll have recommended for his cancer. But Grant wants him to see this as a positive. At the end of the day, what's going to be is going to be, all right? I know that. Medicine's brilliant nowadays, OK? We see so many people who get told that nasty C word and, you know, we come out to them a couple of years later and but it's gone and it's, you know, there's so many people can fight it now, OK? So don't... You know, put your eggs in all one basket and don't, even though it's impossible not to, try not to dwell on the worst case oh, situation. Oh, no. If I had a bad look and gone, oh, he, he, he's done. They're not going to bother, are they? You know what I mean? No, I know it does. Well, as you say, it's cost thousands. So it's still what, what's been done to them. Of course it has. So they wouldn't spend that money unless they knew they could do something about it. They might turn around and go, actually, if we give you this, you'll be better in a month. You don't know. And warning about it, she's not going to get you anywhere. But the worst thing you can do, right, if you don't eat, and you don't drink. I know it's going to make it worse for me. But your other problem is, if you get yourself poorly, they won't do treatment on you. Because if you're poorly, the medicine, the treatments they can give you make you poorly. So they, if you're not strong enough for things like chemotherapy and radiotherapy and stuff like that, they won't give it to you. No. Until you're strong enough and you bounce back, you need to keep your, your food going in, your fluids going in, and your medicines going in on the dot when they're supposed to be had. Because that's your treatment. You always feel sorry for people like Colin, people in that situation. You won't wish it on anybody. He needs the support, he needs someone there to talk to and pick his spirits up and feel loved, feel wanted there. I hope Colin's got light at the end of the tunnel. I hope the treatment works. Grant hopes his advice has sunk in, as moments later they arrive at the hospital. You can stay there nice and comfy. We'll wheel you in on that if you're happy with that. You don't want to go walking, do you? Colin is taken straight in, where he'll finally get some rehydration and some rest. Really? Oh, do you know what I did yesterday, Pris? What did you do yesterday? I did a 5K run with 10 inflatables in it. With all the photos you sent me? Yes. Oh, look, I thought this is random. <laughs> no, I sent you a message and on one of the photos I was like, I've just done this, that 5K that run. That's awesome. I, I had to walk between some of the obstacles because I wanted to save myself to go fast on the obstacles. Uh, it looked really good. It was really good, it was. It's gone five on a Saturday afternoon, and it's been a busy shift for Matt Rodwell and Lee Stevens. And the calls just keep coming in. Um, it's a five-year-old who's bleeding heavily. They've been called to a young child whose head is bleeding. 
Any head injury comes with serious risks such as concussion, skull fracture and even brain damage. Matt and Lee waste no time getting to the patient. Cool. Lead the way. No, lead the way, mate. I have no idea where I'm going. Matt and Lee arrive to find their young patient in a Hello. lot of distress. Remy. Remy. Call him Mimi. So what's happened today, Petal? Um, I'm just coming. She's missed the step and gone hit that wall. This and one I've here? seen her and I've grabbed her and I've seen the gash. And I've okay. Then we ran past the other one. OK, so she's hit this bit here, is she? That corner. OK, OK. And is this normal when something like this happens for her yeah. to kind of cuddle you? Yeah. All right, OK, well, what we'll do then is we'll, like, we'll, we'll sit here for a few minutes and okay. we'll chill, let her settle. Obviously, it's bled a little bit, I can see it on your shirt. What we'll do is we'll let her settle with you for a, a couple of minutes, OK? Stop Daddy! Maybe you gave me a She's waking herself up, Nicky. Yeah. Yeah. Did she get herself worked up quite yeah. a bit? <laughs> what from? She's just like that with everybody. She's like that at school as well. She's got special needs. My name is Matt. Can I lay down on the floor with you a second? Is this is this where you like to sit down, sit is it? With me, me. Oh. Sit with me, me. Okay, I've literally just got on the floor and now you stand up and go running. With Mimi clearly feeling very distressed, Matt's finding it hard to get near her to assess her injury. It's all right, leave, leave a bit, leave a bit. Leave a bit. I'm, it's probably going to need a big plaster. Yeah. We need to do a set of checks on her. Yeah. Okay, at the minimum, one set is a minimum. Okay. Okay. Then we've got Treating two, right? a child who has special needs can be difficult. What are doing? So Matt decides to approach with caution and keep Mimi let as calm as let possible. Let her, no, 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 no. let her do a thing. Let her do a thing. All right. Okay. What are we doing? See, I'm not that bad. I don't smell that bad. Mix it again. Mimi, does your head hurt? I'm not the most welcoming of faces, if I'm perfectly honest, because I'm a bit on the kind of rough and ready side. Kids don't generally tend to like me that well. I really struggle with them. I can't, it's really, really hard. Get down to their level, try and talk at their kind of age group and all that kind of thing. But Mimi really didn't like it. She didn't like me at all. She didn't like Lee. She just wanted mum or dad. Should we do mum? Just do mum. Getting a bandage on Mimi is proving difficult. Matt gets mum to lead by example. Right, so where have you mummed your head? Is it on your forehead here? Yeah. Is it her? Come look, watch mummy. Look, look at mummy, look. Go on, give it a press for me. Give it a press. What's that? Smash it. Is this alive? Here we go. Yay. Even big sister Maya is bandaged in a bid to encourage Mimi. You can always do it across your nose, like that. <laughs> There we go, that's not bad, is it? Yeah. Mate, there we go. Sorted. Yeah. You can have a selfie. Now it's Mimi's okay. turn. Come on then, your turn. No. Okay. Um. With Mimi still being uncooperative, Matt has one final trick up his sleeve. Chuck us those bunny ears. God, the things I do for this job. Oh no, I can't put them on. I like, shall, oh, I, no. shall I put them on as well? <laughs> Hey, on, here we go, look, here we go. Oh, look at that. Take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> so not only I'm going to put bandages on everyone but the patient, OK, I've done no <laughs> observations, and I'm also wearing bunny ears. Brilliant. But even Matt putting on bunny ears hasn't managed to win Mimi over, so Dad steps in to help out. You know what, whilst Dad's holding her, just two minutes. I'll do a quick prime survey. Hello. They've now been in the house 25 minutes. Finally, Matt is able to carry out his first medical observation. Are they your stones? There we go. And turn around for me, Dad. Turn around, if you can. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, no. Oh, no. Stay away. Stay away? So what, what have I done? <laughs> What have I done, oh, eh? No. So what have I done? Let's have a quick video. Oh. Oh, you can do your hair, aren't we? Matt tries to take it a stage further and put on a bandage. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah! Oh, no. 
it's all right. Just relax. Let it go. Let it... We'll, work. we'll sack it off. We'll sack it off. That's fine. I tried every trick in the book to try to get Mimi to bond with me, and she was having none of it. You going to hospital, mate, with those ears? Yeah, damn straight I am. At that kind of stage, it was like, right, we need to take her into hospital. Okay. Come on, sweetheart, on you come. Come just, on. Just pop her come on. right back there. Come on, you can't do anything wrong. Come on, up you go. <laughs> but even getting Mimi to settle down in the ambulance is proving tricky. See, you are. You should be privileged. See? I'm not all that bad. Do you like my blue hands? Do you like my blue hands? No. Do you want a blue hand? No. Aha! See? You're going to wave. You're going to wave. Show me your fingers. Finally, after 45 minutes of trying, Matt and Mimi become friends. Oh! Mimi will now be seen in A and E by the paediatric doctors. No, I'm still wearing these blooming bunny ears, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> Zoe, who had an unexplained fit at home, saw a consultant neurologist at the hospital. But they still weren't able to work out what caused her seizure. However, the good news is that Zoe hasn't had any further fits. Pregnant Bethany, who had to be rushed to hospital because her baby wasn't moving, had a boy just four days later. Baby Travis had severe jaundice, but he's now back at home with his mum. 999 mode activated. David, whose blood sugar fell so low he almost lost consciousness, followed the ambulance crew's advice and saw a specialist diabetes nurse for a full review of his condition. He's now had his insulin levels reduced and has been in good health ever since. Colin, whose GP called an ambulance because he was so dehydrated and undernourished, spent five weeks in hospital while staff tried to get him strong enough for surgery to remove the bone cancer in his pelvis. The eventual operation lasted more than 10 hours. Sadly, the extent of the cancer meant surgeons had to amputate Colin's leg. His brother is staying with him to help him with his rehabilitation. And four-year-old Mimi was as good as gold when she was seen by doctors in A&E, where she had her cut glued after banging her head against the wall. Unfortunately, the wound came open after a few days, and she had to go back to hospital to have it stitched up. She's now left with a small scar. Hello. 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 Hello.